What would it be and would you call it to his face? If you were faced with him in all his glory What would you ask if you had just one question? And yeah, yeah, God is great And yeah, yeah, God is good And yeah, 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 yeah What if God was one with us? Couldn't stop His love for us Help us strength If God had a face, what would it look like and would you want to see? If seeing meant that you would have to believe in things like heaven and in Jesus and the saints and all the prophets and yeah, yeah, God is great and yeah, yeah. God is good and yeah, 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 yeah. What if God was one with us? Couldn't stop His love for us. Help a stranger on the bus, try to make His way home. Just try to make His way. Show him to heaven on his own No need to call him on the phone Say hi to the Pope maybe in Rome God is great and yeah, yeah God is good and yeah, 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 yeah. Help a stranger on the bus Trying to make his way home Just trying to make my way home Like a holy rolling stone Back up to heaven on my own Just trying to make my way No need to call me on the phone Say hi to the Pope maybe in Welcome to this meditation. Allow yourself to take a seat and relax into your chair or wherever you are. Now gently close your eyes and allow yourself to have a deep breath. Let go of your day, let go of the past and let go of the future and allow yourself to be in the present moment. And with every exhale, you dive deeper into your heart space. In your heart, you are loveless, you are peaceless. Allow yourself to go deeper, a little bit more, till you enter the core of your heart. And allow 
allow yourself now to receive love, peace, and harmony. Allow yourself to feel the love for God. And you can choose now to relax into the love for God and trust the love for God and trust your guidance. Trust God in your guidance. Trust yourself. Trust your true self. and trust the love and God in others. You are safe in loving God. You are safe in loving the God in others. You are safe in God's guidance. Take another deep breath. And let go of the mind and the voice. And allow yourself to relax deeper into your love for God. Into the love for yourself. Into the love for the two and into the love for our goals to reach here. It is safe to enter this relationship. It is safe to be led to God. It is safe to have a relationship with love and God. You can choose now to relax deeper into your heart space. And whatever feeling is arising, it is okay. There's no judgment here. Your feelings are not what you are. You are love and you are peace and you are an extension of God's love. Allow yourself to feel it. You are safe in your feelings and you are very safe in your connection with God. You can choose now to surrender all of yourself to Him. And let your heart to be filled with God's love and stay there. Take one deep breath. And stay in the love of God forever. Welcome everyone to today's Sunday service. My name is Roxanne and I will be doing the card reading for today. So I have pulled the cards from the deck, The Power of Surrender from Judith Orloff. 
So I've already pre-shuffled the cards. I have pulled three, and so I'm going to get started with the first one. So the card is Surrender Your Fear of Change. The universe is reminding you that you are cared for always. Whether you're afraid of a change in your job, your health, or a relationship, or if you fear aging or death, repeat the affirmation, I have faith that all is well. Yeah, so what I feel from this card is um, a lot of times on this journey, you're going to be you're going to be faced with some of your deepest fears. And often the fears that we face on the twin flame path are fears of change, right? Um, you're going to be experiencing change constantly in your union, um, in your life purpose, you know, in your relationships, you're going to have relationships that will come and go. Um, you're going to experience growth. You're going to expand, you know, you're going to um, heal in certain areas and that's going to bring about change. And so I feel like the message here is to surrender the need to control and just allow what is meant to happen to happen for you. I know this is about surrendering to the guidance of your guru. This is about surrendering to where God is guiding you. And sometimes it can be scary. You know, some of the fears that we have to face can be scary, but when you move to the other side of it, there's always going to be something better there for you. There's always going to be more peace and more love to be um, received. And so I feel like the message is that it's safe for you to move through whatever it is that you're facing right now. I know that I have moved through a lot of changes in the last month or two, and at times it just felt like a lot, but know that these changes are bringing you where you're meant to be. Okay, the next card is Surrender to What Is. Yeah, I feel like this is kind of goes hand in hand with the first one. It's we do have to accept where we are right now on the twin flame journey. We have to accept what is happening. You can't you can't grow, you can't have your harmonious union if you're not like looking at what's in front of you and accepting reality as it is. Flow with what is instead of fighting it. When you can't change a situation, compassionately accepting it exactly as it is will bring you peace. So yeah, this is just about um, learning to accept yourself, accept your situation, accept your union and your twin flame exactly where you are. And it may not necessarily be what you want it to be yet. You know, you may not um, be the person that you know ultimately you desire to become. But before we arrive there, we have to learn to be where we are right now and surrender to presence and surrender to love in this very moment. And that is the first step to um, moving in the direction of your dreams. And the last card is Surrender Procrastination. Now is the time to jump on a goal instead of putting it off. Taking action will attract success. Yes. So yeah, there is a component when you're manifesting your dreams where you do have to, you know, let go and just accept what is. And, you know, your next steps are going to be revealed to you. Um, it doesn't mean that we surrender and we do nothing. It just means that we have to listen to God's guidance before we take action. But when God does give you a step, you know, if he's telling you to um, put yourself out there and share yourself, then it's important to respect that guidance that God is giving you and, you know, taking that step, taking action on what he has shown you. Or if God is showing you that someone is your twin flame and, um, you know, you, you feel guided to go somewhere or so you feel guided to express yourself to your twin flame. It's, it's safe to do that. You know, it's safe to take action, um, from a place of peace. And that is how you manifest your dreams is by, you know, letting go of resistance to getting started. Even if you're not perfect right now, even if, um, you still have a lot to work through, you can start now, you know, you can start sharing yourself and doing the things that you love 
in this very moment now. So yeah, I feel like this was a really beautiful reading. So I'll just go through the cards once again. So surrender your fear of change. Let go of resistance to change. Change is good. Change is healthy. And it is going to happen on this path. Surrender to what is. So accept where you are right now. Love yourself unconditionally. And you'll see things naturally change um, and evolve. And surrender procrastination, right? Everybody needs to do that. Um, it's safe for you to move forward and take the step that is being shown to you. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's card reading um, and I will see you next time. Hello and welcome to Church of Union Sunday service. Today it is a very intimate yet a very important topic that is our relationship with guru and our relationship with guru where does it lead us as this topic came up for me it was again a reminder of how i joined tfu how i came into the church of union i used to go in search of god not knowingly but probably unconsciously to find relief and peace so i used to go to every place where there was god that is pilgrim places let it be churches let it be temples let it be mosques wherever possible i could find peace i would go sit there for hours or go weekly and spend time there because i felt a sense of connection and a sense of peace which i was searching for then as i went deeper i understood that well someone told me uh it looks like you're in search of your guru so i was surprised that i'm not a spiritual person at all and suddenly i had this urge to you know visit all these places spiritual places and suddenly you know over two years i kept visiting these places and i was very much connected to how i was brought up that very 3d uh, very very worldly consciousness of just bothering about how i look or what i eat or about dinners so when i was entering spirituality trust me there was nobody teaching me what is spirituality i couldn't understand it very well but i understood that there is something in it for me and i was not even aware that i am searching for god and as i went deeper i heard the calling that i need to call in my guru and i did find certain teachers in rishikesh and i first thought okay they are my guru this is how it is but i never felt peaceful i never felt at home grounded or that relief and it was not a permanent relief but the very first time i met jeff online for a sunday class my soul rested i understood i'm home just by him calling me my name it still makes me very emotional because it's after probably maybe the search seems just two years of search but i feel like it's lifetimes of search and as an indian there is a lot of guru consciousness here and there is a belief system here and there is a system here that guru is the light that takes you towards god so guru becomes your guide to god so all along i was searching for god and when i reached jeff and shilia my soul felt settled so when i met them consciously i was not aware that this is what i'm choosing this is what my soul felt 
over two years of healing guru blocks, two years of several types of healing, I understood that, oh my God, this, this was my eureka moment. This is it for me. And it was so beautiful, so interesting. And the day I met Jeff, that day itself he had touched my core block towards my union. And it took me two years to understand that and heal it. And because of that, I am in union as of now. So yet, you know, it is important to follow it and chip away at it. So when you follow Guru, all you receive is God, love and your twin flame. This is out of my experience that I received. So getting closer to Guru also might feel a little uncomfortable because all your blocks to your twin flame, God, everything is going to come up because they are always going to guide you towards your blocks so that you can heal it and love it. Guru is your guide, but not your source. So they will point at it and it will feel uncomfortable that, okay, there's a block there. So it's just a matter of loving and healing that block. But the beautiful bit is when I have healed the block that Guru shows me, it has been showering of unimaginable blessings. So as Soraya speaks about this ceremony, it is nothing but having a relationship with God. And Guru is someone God has anointed for this job. And it is a very, very high ordained job and not an easy one. So what I felt in this ceremony is that there is a lot of healing around this and what are the resistance towards Guru in me? What are the resistance towards Guru in me? Is a resistance towards God in me? Why am I resisting God? Which means I'm resisting my authentic self and that made me realize that okay, little more surrenderance, little more deeper. And every ceremony brings so many beautiful gifts and healing. And this ceremony is a gift in itself. As the ceremony is a gift in itself, do feel open-hearted to tithe to the Church of Union through unionism.org org and also feel free to leave a like here and share and subscribe i invite you into today's sunday ceremony hello everyone and welcome to another church of union sunday service my name is soraya and i'll be your minister of union for today's service before we begin, let's get started with our opening ohms followed by our opening prayer. You can either join aloud or quietly in your heart. Now for our opening prayer. I am the only child of God, forever part of him. I am created by him in perfection, and there I always remain. My mind is my sanctuary, where I keep his holy creation sacred. I will only allow in his voice. I will only accept his word. Today I will hear the word of God. I surrender myself to his teachings through his divine channel. I will honor what he has spoken and accept it as his will. 
I will be obedient to his word, for this is my salvation. In Christ's name, Om. Amen. So hello, everyone. Like I said, welcome to today's Church of Union Sunday service. Today, I want to talk about our relationship with our guru and going where the guru leads us. To kind of open up the sermon, I want to share a little bit about actually preparing for the sermon because I went on a little bit of a journey myself and uh, I just actually realized what I would be sharing about like just a couple hours ago. So uh, I want to share a little bit about it because um, this topic is very sensitive and very uh, personal to me, uh, but I feel that it's so important and I feel that as spiritual students, our spiritual path, our relationship with our guru is not separate from our relationship with God. It's a part of it. And it's so important to be looking at that relationship and healing it and and working through upsets where we feel blocked in that relationship. I, I know um, being on this path, the twin flame path, it's all related. It's all connected. You know, you heal your relationship with God, you heal your relationship with guru, yourself, your twin flame. All these things are interconnected. It's all essentially one thing. We know from the teachings of union that all upsets are ultimately upsets with God. And so no matter what you're looking at, uh, there's one relationship that's happening at all times. And so looking at these things is important and and really checking our heart, checking our relationship with God. And so as I share about my journey of opening this up, I, I hope that you'll take the opportunity to just kind of check in with your relationship with God and how you relate, um, where you're willing to go with God. If there's places where you feel blocked from going with God, um, that's really the purpose of the sermon. We're just going to kind of dive deep and look at what is the purpose of our guru so that we can really embrace that relationship. So like I shared, I didn't really know what I'd be talking about today. <laughs> it was a very unknown thing. I, I like to kind of be sitting with a sermon for a while. Um, it's not always the case that I do, uh, but I like to. And I've had the sermon kind of like in like in the back of my mind for a few weeks now, and I've kind of been you know talking to God about different things. I've done a lot of deep healing personally, and there's been at least three times in the last couple of weeks where I was like, God, I could do a sermon on this. Like I feel like I'm passionate about this. This is really profound, really powerful realization I'm having and healing, and I want to share this. This would be great. And God's like, No, 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 no. We're not there yet. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> like I didn't have like a go ahead yes this is it let's hit record so it just wasn't time and uh today's the day and I was like yes time to do sermon and I'm like but I don't know what I'm talking about and so I'm like god um you know how do I find clarity here like you know what is this going to look like is this something where you know I just need to take some time to meditate just feel into it you know do you want to just tell me <laughs> what you want to talk about um, and God was like, watch The Chosen. So that's what I did today. That was my afternoon. Um, for you, those of you guys who do not know, The Chosen is a TV series um, that's based on the life of Jesus. So it shows his ministry um, pretty much from the beginning. And uh, it, it, my understanding is it's going to go beyond the resurrection. So it's going to kind of go into the early church a bit. Uh, I have been very resistant to the show and very upset about it. And I've been healing a lot recently of like upsets that I've had with Christianity, with Bible studies, with like Sunday school type stuff. Um, just like really working through all those energies so that I can um, feel at peace in this space in my life because I, I have had a lot of upsets there and a lot of hurt there. Um, and so to watch The Chosen was kind of like, a, it was a thing. Like I was like, okay, <laughs> I wonder what's going to come up. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not going to like go into any kind of spoilers about it. But what I will say is uh, there's kind of like this like running theme that I've noticed from what I have watched of the show, uh, where Jesus is obviously sharing some really deep and profound spiritual truths. And the disciples are like, totally not getting it. Like just not getting it. Um, they, they, they see who Jesus is to them. They see like, you know, that there's, there's more than what meets the eye and, and they have an appreciation and respect there, but there's like, it's just like over their heads, you know, and 
in this particular scene, um, Jesus was teaching, leading, you know, shining his light, helping. And the disciples were fussing about leadership and like, you know, who would be in this position or that position. They were comparing themselves to each other and they were just like, really just on a completely different wavelength, like really not getting it. And I was annoyed with the disciples. <laughs> so I was like, huh, upset, right? And what do we do when we're upset, unionist? We do the mirror exercise. And so I had to kind of like watch a little bit more just to get really clear on what my step one was. And I realized that what I was upset about was that the disciples were like taking this really deep and profound spiritual teaching from Jesus, which was just so, so just ugh, divine, so wonderful, right? Guru's teaching is a powerful thing. And the disciples were trying to take that and like fit it into their understanding and make it mean what they wanted it to mean. And they like had parameters around what they would allow it to mean. And so it's like they were trying to get Jesus to fit into their understanding. They were trying to get the teaching to kind of like fit into their understanding. And it was annoying to me, like real talk, that's how I was feeling. So I was doing the mirror exercise on this and what I found within myself is that this is where I have been blocked in my relationship with God this whole time. And uh, for those of, of you guys, uh, I, don't, I don't know how much I've shared about this, but um, those of you guys who have heard a little bit about like my past, um, you know, I've talked a lot about my Christian background. Um, my, I've, I've had a relationship with God really my whole life looking back, but I really began my relationship with God consciously when I was 16. So it's been about 20 years, <laughs> not to age myself, but I kind of did. Um, it's been about 20 years that I've been uh, walking with God consciously. And, um, you know, Jesus has been my guru the, the great majority of that. I found Jeff and Shalia uh, like seven or eight years ago now. Um, and uh, met my twin flame like a, a year and a half, two years before that. Um, and it's been beautiful. Love, lo love, <laughs> love my journey so far. It's been amazing. Um, but what I will say is, is since I met my twin flame and I began the twin flame path, I've come to realize that I've had some pretty huge intimacy blocks with God. Um, I, I, I feel comfortable, you know, relating to God, communicating with God feels really great. Um, pretty open communication overall. Um, there's a lot of things that feel good in my relationship with God, but intimacy, it's like, it was like speaking a different language with me and my twin flame. And it just really showed me like, Hey, like I'm, I'm holding back. Like I'm afraid of this, you know, like I, I'm really afraid to go to this place with God. And as I was healing this, I realized that this is, this is really what's been going on is that I have been relating to God on that more like intellectual level of my understanding. And I have been unwilling to go with God here. And by here, I mean to this place of like that, that experience, that feeling emotional intimacy experience with God. Um, I've been like super resistant to that. And <laughs> when I when I was looking at this and, and healing it, like a little bit later, I, I realized that a few years ago, um, I was in, I think it was a group coaching class uh, with Jeff and Shalia. And I remember Jeff said to me that um, he made like some comment and he, he was like, he played it off like it was a joke because it was like very compassionate for where I was at at the time. Um, but he was like, he said something about like me feeling like I, I knew a lot or knew it all or something like that right um but he said it in kind of like a joking way but like i take that stuff seriously like if you know they say something to me like it's very very valuable but you know at that time i i didn't get it and like now i'm having this realization and i'm like oh <laughs> like oh that's what it means like i've been really relating to god on this intellectual level like focusing on what i could see spiritually focusing on what i understood spiritually what i could perceive and, and communication with god but being unwilling to have the experiential thing going on with God. Um, and 
as I was healing this, I was also realizing that this is ultimately what the guru is teaching and offering. That's what I saw Jesus offering to his disciples. That's what I've experienced with Jeff and Shalia, um, with me as a student of this work, with the teachings of union, is that they have always pointed me to this kind of like experience of oneness with God, not here's some information about God, here's some spiritual truths, like, Spiritual truth is rich and deep and very beautiful, truly. Um, very beautiful, very inspiring and enlightening. It's just, it's, it's honestly, it's been the joy of my life to, to come to see and know God more. But Jeff and Shalia are pointing to experiencing oneness with God, which is ultimately what Jesus was talking about as well. Every guru, every, you know, true spiritual teacher is pointing to that and, I can see how I have like basically put up a wall and I wasn't willing to actually go there. Like I, I'd go here with God, but not there. Um, they shared with me at one point that part of my, you know, core block to harmonious union has to do with not realizing that I want all of God and everything is just starting to click in a new way for me here. Um, so it's always a good time when that happens, but it's realizing that what God wants with us is not for us to know about him. It's not for us to know of him. It's not for us to even have the ability to see um, spiritually. Like that's not, that's not it. That's not the end all be all. Those things are beautiful. That's, that comes with knowing God and that's a beautiful way to be with God. It feels really good. It's, it's great. Um, it's enjoyable. It's rich. It's meaningful. It, it's very powerful to be able to, to know God in that way. But God wants to be with us for us to know God, not just know of God. And I look back even with my upsets with Christianity that I've been working through a lot. It's this whole thing of like knowing of God, but not being with God. It's the same thing. And so this is just clicking for me in a huge way. And I'm realizing that what the guru is actually offering us is so experiential and it, it, it is true intimacy with God. And that means moment to moment, you're, you're feeling and experiencing your consciousness and you're with God in your feelings moment to moment. You are experiencing the flow of consciousness. You are with that light within you, present with it, not just knowing of it, not just perceiving it, but experiencing it. And that is the flow. And that is what the guru, um, who, whomever your guru happens to be, um, I've chosen to um, claim Jeff and Shalia as my guru because that is that this is my path. I, I, I I'm that that's that's what I choose. Um, but the guru is essentially there to lead you into that. This isn't to create a religion. This is about helping you know God, and by know God it means that intimacy, right? It's so tempting and ego in particular, this is ultimately an ego pattern, right? Of like hanging out around God, but not actually going where God is guiding you to go. Um, ego, it, it can kind of slip its way into religion sometimes. It's not saying that religion is egoic, but it can kind of get in there, this mentality of like, you know, wanting to kind of Basically, it's kind of like a type of self-deception. Like we convince ourselves that we have something that we don't actually have. And that was that whole like communication thing playing out that I saw on The Chosen where it's like Jesus and his disciples were in some ways like kind of on different wavelengths in the sense that they weren't understanding <laughs> like really what, what he was pointing them to. And... In order to truly receive what the guru is offering us, we have to be willing to go anywhere and be willing to be changed, to be willing to be vulnerable and 
it's not something where like a guru is just, you know, someone who gives you some really great words of wisdom and you learn this is technically how it works and you kind of figure out the formula of spirituality. That's not actually the role of a guru. And I feel like another part of this that um, can kind of get into this mentality is like quotes, you know, like you know, nowadays we got social media quotes everywhere. Like you can see quotes from A Course in Miracles, quotes from Buddha, quotes from all of these different spiritual teachers and, and gurus and masters. And there can be this sense of like, it's conveying just information. It's conveying information. Um, but we have to choose to really sit with what's being said and go deeper and ultimately surrender the resistance to intimacy with God. My experience with my guru, whether it was Jesus or Jeff and Shalia, my experience was, is like, they've offered me like just a complete relationship with God, no holding back, like total ascension. Like that's, that's what the guru is, is pointing you to and supporting you into. But I would decide the terms of how far I would go and in what way I would go. And it's like, I would like receive what the guru was saying intellectually. I would kind of look at it and I would feel like what I feel comfortable with and how I could apply it in a way that I felt comfortable with instead of truly humbling myself in that space and being like, yeah, I'll go there. I'll lay all of that. I don't need to understand it. I don't need to have a grip on it. And I, I most certainly do not need to try to control my journey with God. I can let go and just trust and allow myself to be loved here and to to go to that place with God and be with God in a way that I never have before. In spiritual truth, only love is real. When we're dealing in the realm of complexity and information and, and all this intellectual stuff, it gets so complicated and we're missing the point, just like the disciples, everything they were involved in, it was just really complicated, but they were missing the point so often with what Jesus was actually sharing. And we have such a gift to be able to have this kind of guidance that we have in terms of our ascension path from Jeff and Shalia, from the teachings of union. It's profound. I mean, truly, out of anything I've seen, I mean, it's it's an extraordinary thing um, to have this type of leadership and guidance and support to be able to help us ascend, to help us achieve harmonious twin flame union. Uh, the stuff, this isn't something that's happening <laughs> in the twin flame world, um, except for here. Like this is something that's very profound, the miracles that are happening right and left every day in this community. This is a very, very profound thing. And God has given us this huge gift. And I guess the sermon is ultimately about receiving that gift and being willing to actually be changed by love and being willing to actually be with love. I feel for me, like I've, I've held so much admiration and I'm not saying that I haven't loved God. I've, I've had, I've had a love and respect for God, but I haven't been willing to be with God, you know, like loving God isn't like a thought in your mind that you have sometimes an overall sense of how you feel about somebody from a distance. And when you love someone, you choose to be with them. Love is the same as union we know from A Course in Miracles. And so it's that oneness that we experience our love. And ultimately what I've been afraid of is experiencing my oneness with God, myself, and being with God. And tiptoeing around it, enjoying spirituality. You know, you see it also a lot with people who like, you know, they'll want to like just feel really spiritually high, but they don't really want to be grounded in the truth and, and develop maturity um, spiritually. It's, it's this whole thing of like making our spirituality about, spirituality about all these like things about the real thing. You know, it's like kind of like playing the spectator instead of like actually getting into the game yourself, you know, being where God is and being with God, that is life. That is like, you're, you're doing it. You're, you're there. You, you get it. You get where all of this is leading you and you choose it and you let yourself go there. All the other stuff is just stuff to, you know, occupy us and it serves a purpose, you know, like, cause I know I'm not the only one who's like this. And, you know, I'm not saying that 
the way that I was relating with God didn't hold value. I mean, I wouldn't be here right now if it didn't hold value. But God is just showing me, hey, it's time. It's time to go to that place you've been afraid of. It's time to be with me here. It's time to lay down your fears, to lay down that control of trying to be with me how you want to be with me and have it be a certain way. And as long as you don't have to feel super vulnerable and as long as you don't have to face those fears of intimacy, as long as you don't have to go to that uncomfortable place of, of really being in a relationship with me in this way, um, it's time to let all that go and, and let yourself be with love and be changed by love in that space to to actually receive what I've been calling in. Shalia said that to me one time many years ago. She said, it's safe to receive what you've been calling in. I feel like I've had this inner conflict my whole life and I have tried to control so much how I was going to be with God, when I was going to be with God, in what ways I was going to be with God, under what conditions I was going to be with God. And the only person who took a bad deal with that was me, you know, because I'm experiencing the illusion of separation. I was denying myself of the most wonderful thing I could ever experience, and that's God. And this is about laying down everything that we've put before God, every limit we've put on God, every parameter we've tried to fit God into and allowing ourselves to be changed and allowing ourselves to receive the gift that our guru is giving us. You know, I, I mentioned to someone recently that I noticed that I'd also been blocked, like in terms of watching Twin Flame Ascension School classes recently. Like I was just like, oh, like just, just so resistant to watching classes. And I can see that this is why, because like I, I haven't really wanted the fullness of what was being offered to me. I have been holding back and like I said, trying to be in control of my experience of the teaching and, and all of it. And, and like I said, you know, I'm not saying that there isn't value in coming to a place where you're ready to go to that place with God. And you don't have to push yourself to have a relationship with God that you're not quite ready to have yet. It's okay to be on the journey to that. That's It's part of ascension. It's part of healing and coming into harmonious union. And so that's normal, like that's okay, that's part of it. It's not that that's a bad thing, but it's just not allowing yourself to be complacent and noticing if you have this kind of pattern running where you're trying to, to only be with God certain ways and to certain extents. And then like, where's that line? Like, where's that place that you tell God no? Like, what's that place that you're afraid to go to? Like, you know, if you're not in harmonious union yet, like what, what feels uncomfortable about being in harmonious union? Because harmonious union is the truth. It's our oneness with God. It's choosing to experience all of ourselves. And why why don't we want that? Like, why don't we want to feel all of our feelings all the time? Why don't we want to be present with ourselves all the time? Why don't we want to be with ourselves all the time? What's holding us back from fully embodying the different keys to harmonious union that we know from the book, Twin Flames, Finding Your Ultimate Lover? And this is just a, a really good time, I feel, to really evaluate and look at our relationship with God with with honesty, you know, it's, it, it can sometimes feel uncomfortable to go to these places, to to be honest with yourself on, on this level. I think that for a long time, I wanted to convince myself that I was in a better place than, than where I actually was. I didn't want to know what I was missing, you know what I mean? Like, let's just focus on all the great things got going on, but don't really want to go there, don't want to know about that. And of course, with Twin Flames, they're going to show you that. They're going to show you that there's like places that you will just not go, super resistant. And it's okay if like you're going through that and, and you're feeling that resistance and you're just now becoming aware of it, even just hearing this, that's okay. I had a moment like after realizing this where I actually felt really like, like this feeling of, of like guilt and like shame and just feeling like, oh my God, like, ugh. I just couldn't believe that that I'd been running these patterns and and the arrogance involved in it and just like, you know, just kind of I could just see how I've been denying God so much of of the more that he was guiding me into. 
how I hadn't received the gift and how I hadn't, you know, really received, you know, the fullness of what Jeff and Shelly had been offering to me. I haven't really let them love me, um, which has come up in my relationship with them before. And it's like, I can just see it so much more now. And I had this moment where I was like, like, ugh, how could I do that to God? How could I do that to my gurus? How could I do that to myself? And, and you know, this is just the journey. And it's so important that we all have compassion for ourselves. I choose to have compassion for myself. Um, but to be honest and to take these opportunities and to just realize that this is the journey to getting to that place of experiencing that intimacy with God. You know, you've got to see it before you can do something about it. You've got to find clarity first. And, and it's safe to be on that journey. And that's what this has been for me. It's been a journey of clarity. And I, I know that God has a reason for doing everything the way he does it at the times that he does it. And, and maybe this is just what God wants to do is to just shine a light on where we might be holding back from him. And the real reason that we hold back from God at any time is because we're afraid. And I want to point out that there's nothing to be afraid of when it comes to love that the one who is afraid, it's ultimately ego, that's not you. And it's safe to bring love there. It's safe to work through that fear and release that fear so that you can have what you've called in. You can have the love that you've called in and you're never gonna like dive into love and find something that's something to be afraid of. It's, it's love, it's safe, it's safe to be loved. It's safe to be with love, it's safe to be with God. You know, separation is an illusion. We're, we've never actually been separate from God. It's always been an illusion. So we're afraid of what we already are. We're afraid of what we already have. We're afraid of love, which is what we essentially, you know, that's our being. And so it's a, it's a silly thing when you look at it like that. It's truly safe to surrender all of that resistance and just allow yourself to just be in your harmonious union, be with God, you know, experience intimacy with yourself in a way like you never have before. No reason to hold back. We know from the teachings of union, love never hesitates. It's safe to love and it's safe to open your heart and it's safe to be vulnerable. It's safe to experience intimacy with God. It's safe to put away all of the intellectualizing and understanding the teaching and, and this and that. And that's beautiful. I'm not saying don't understand it. Don't, don't be like a mindless person. That's, not, <laughs> that's not, not what I'm talking about here. But what I'm saying is let that be in its proper place, but don't get confused to feeling like that is the fullness of your relationship with God. God wants to give you so much more than that. That is what the guru is offering. And that is what God um, really is, is calling for us to choose and to claim, allow ourselves to have and receive. So that feels complete. Take some time. I recommend, um, you know, today over the next week, over the, over the coming days and weeks, um, to really check in with your relationship with God and see if there's any kind of fear of moving forward, a fear of more with God, fear of more intimacy, fear of more closeness, fear of more emotional honesty, fear of more um, connection and fear of more communication, fear of more um, relating and work through that fear. Don't let that remain unchecked and set yourself free into the fullness of everything that God has for you. So now for our closing prayer, followed by our closing alms. Father, I accept your word into my heart. I will honor your will in my life and will follow you without hesitation anywhere you ask. I know you guide me into your heart where I belong. I accept that you are everywhere and your teaching is in all things. God, I know you provide me clarity in this teaching of union that I may be forever in union with you. I accept that you are in me as you are in my brother. I will not deny my brother your word and will share your teaching with him in any way you ask and only as you ask. For when I share my salvation with him, I fully claim my salvation and return to you with him. In Christ's name. Om, amen. Speaking this prayer in your heart means that you have accepted 
that you are on the path of awakening to your true divine nature. This is what it means to be a unionist. Follow the teachings of union with God wherever you find them and purify your consciousness into perfect union with your creator. And now for our closing ohms. Namaste. Thank you, Soraya, for that beautiful message. It was such a loving topic and a much needed one where I do feel like I need to sit with it more. Like what Soraya said that okay, I need to see where all am I blocking God? In which areas am I blocking God? What is my resistance to Guru? What further resistance to Guru? Yes, at a very deep level, I have accepted them. And it is time to go deeper because it is time to go deeper with God. Because what I realized is that, well, Guru just wants you to know God. And They'll do it very lovingly as per where you are at in your consciousness. So as I spoke earlier that it took me time, two years to understand that it is my core block. It is so loving of my guru, Jeff and Shilya, to give me that space in the community for two years without pushing, without saying a single other word to me that this is my block again repeating it they allowed me to discover it with a lot of support in the community so it is such a loving community loving process and also where Soraya is saying that it is not about knowing God it is about being with God God doesn't want to know uh, want you to know about him but or her but god wants you to know that he or she is there and god wants to be with you live living life is god it this was a very deeply touching topic and also a lot of feelings did come up for me on where i am not opening up to God, what is my resistance in those areas and yes, it is a block to intimacy, even I felt that because number one, a twin flame relationship is an intimate relationship, so it is understandable that there is intimacy blocks and of course an intimacy block with God and like what Soraya mentioned that love is always extending a hand towards you and fear is what blocks it. So what is the block towards feeling all your feelings? This is what came up for me that I I was healing this in the morning also that what was my block towards feeling all my feelings so feelings felt like it is going to hurt me or scare me so well it's just a feeling how can a feeling hurt you just logically right this sort of adds up for me in the ceremony that it was only a resistance to God, a resistance to be vulnerable with God, a resistance to trust God, that God is my protector, God is my safety. So that brought me a lot of insight. Do feel free to comment here that what is the insight you received through this ceremony and 
join us in the after church tea time in the unionism spiritual discussion group on facebook also feel free to tide and support church of union at unionism.org so to everyone have a wonderful sunday thank you